Hi everyone. In this uh, practice problem, I am going to walk you through preparing a classified balance sheet. So let's check it out. All right, here we go. Below is information taken from the adjusted trial balance of Blue Devil Inc. for the year ended December 31, 2019. Prepare Blue Devil Inc.'s classified balance sheet. And we have a particular note here. Note the income taxes have not yet been paid. So a few things I want to point out in the instructions before you even get started. First of all, if you're not yet familiar with what an adjusted trial balance is, have no fear. That's just the collection of financial information that is ultimately going to populate your financial statements. Okay, And so I'm just telling you where this is coming from. Um, you know the company. You know the, the point in time of the, the, the balance sheet here. You have to do a classified balance sheet. So it's not good enough just to say assets, liability, equity. You've got to break it down into the subcategories and do not overlook the effects that that note might have on the given information. Um, the last thing I'll point out before I set you loose to try this on your own, again, because you might not be familiar with the adjusted trial balance, is down here you've got retained earnings. And notice it does not specify whether this is beginning retained earnings or ending retained earnings. Now, for those of you who are familiar with an adjusted trial balance, you already know that if you see retained earnings on an adjusted trial balance, that is always the beginning retained earnings. For those of you not familiar, I'm telling you that way you'll be able to solve this problem accurately. All right, so that's it. I'm setting you loose. Um, pause the video, try this on your own, build a classified balance sheet from scratch, and when you're ready, come back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So we're going to tackle this classified balance sheet problem. And anytime I have problems of this nature where I'm given a big list of information, I like to do a little housekeeping before I really get underway. So first off, I'm preparing a financial statement. All financial statements get a header. So header, blue, devil, ink, then the statement name balance sheet. No need to say that it is a classified balance sheet. That's going to be evident from the formatting. And then this is a balance sheet at a point in time, that point in time being 12, 31, 19. So there's our three components of the header that we're going to need on our financial statement. Two, look on the left side, this list of information. We need to clean this information up. Okay, we need to identify where these pieces go, if there's anything in here we're not going to use, if there's anything extra to consider. And three, we've got to make sure we don't forget about this note up here, right? We got to make sure we incorporate that somehow. So um, let's go ahead and I guess let's clean up the given information and then we'll go from there. So uh, first up, sales revenue, 240,000. Sales revenue is a revenue. Revenues go on the income statement. They do not go on the balance sheet. So I'm going to strike that out for now. Uh, next up, common stock. Stock accounts go in shareholders' equity. Um, remember, shareholders' equity doesn't have any subcategory, so there is nothing else to classify it as other than simply shareholders' equity. Accounts payable is a liability, but specifically accounts payable is a current liability because that's your day-to-day -day, um, debts from your, from your ordinary course of business. Cash is an asset and is the most liquid asset you have, therefore it is a current asset. Cost of goods sold, or COGS, even though the word expense isn't in it, this is an expense and therefore it goes on the income statement. I'm going to put a line through that. Income tax expense, well that one actually has the word expense in it, gives it away. That also goes on the income statement, so I'm going to scratch it. Next up, I have investments, and I specify that these are some long-term investments. So investments are assets because they're something you have of value, but these are long-term investments, so they are going to go into the long-term investment section of the asset section. Next up, copyrights. Copyrights are a special asset known as an intangible asset, so that's the category they fall into. Prepaid insurance. This is when you pay ahead for something, but now you're owed a service, in this case, insurance coverage. Um, that is also an asset to you, and typically you don't pay for things more than a year in advance, so that's going to be a current asset. Next up, retained earnings, beginning retained earnings. Retained earnings will go in our shareholders' equity section, but I'm going to put a red asterisk next to that because we're going to have to convert that. We're going to have to get to ending retained earnings. We can't use beginning on the balance sheet.
And then last up, investments, another asset. But in this case, these investments are short term. Therefore, they go in the current asset section. So we've identified all the things we were given. We've scratched the ones that don't go on the balance sheet. We've labeled where all the pieces that will go are going to go. Now we have two other things to address before we keep going. The note. Income taxes have not yet been paid. So we had an income tax of 11000 If they haven't been paid yet, then even though we weren't given it explicitly in our list of information, what that means is in addition to the income tax expense, we're also going to have an income tax payable, a liability, saying that we still owe this money. And of course, the IRS isn't going to wait more than a year for you to pay, so that is going to be a current liability. So that takes care of our note. I'll put a little check up there because we've added it to our list. And then finally, we could deal with it now or we could deal with it later. Either way is fine. But we've got this beginning retained earnings um, that we know we're going to have to recalculate to ending retained earnings. We'll just cross that bridge um, when we get there. All right. So, uh, and it would be okay to do it now. I just uh, figure I'll, I'll save the space until we have more space to work with. Um, all right. So now we're going to kick things off. First section of the balance sheet, assets. And then, of course, assets is split into four categories. So we're going to have our current assets first. And under our current assets, in this case, we are going to have our cash and our prepaid insurance and our short-term investments. Now, you go in order of liquidity. Cash is always the most liquid item that you have, $80,000. Next up, the quickest thing to turn into cash are going to be those short-term investments. So investments, I'm just going to put a little parentheses ST here to remind us that these are short-term and that's why they're going in current assets. That's 42000 And then you're going to have your prepaids after that. They're a little less liquid prepaid insurance in this case of 12000 giving us total CA, current assets, and that's going to be $80,000, $134,000 total. And there are current assets. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put check marks next to those to remind myself that, hey, we've used that already. All right. After our current assets, we need our long-term assets or what's known as long-term investments. Um, and and what the reason it's called long-term investments rather than long-term asset is because there's two other categories of assets that are also typically long-term, your PP&E and your intangibles. Um, and so those are actually um, assets that are used in operations, whereas long-term investments tend not to be used in operations. That's where that wording um, difference comes from. So we've got our LTI, long-term investment section. And if we look over at our list, I believe the only thing we have for long-term investments are the literal investments in other companies worth $40,000. So I'm going to put that here, investments, LT, $40,000. Now, a little tip. Um, if you only have one line item in a section like we do here, you don't have to put a subtotal. It's redundant because there's nothing to add up. It's $40,000, and so I'm not going to subtotal this. I'll check off my long-term investments. Um, next up would be our PP&E section, our property, plant, and equipment. But notice we did not identify any PP&E in this list, so we can skip it. The final section of assets is your intangible assets. I'll just write IA for intangible assets. And we only had one, I believe, and that was the copyrights worth $8,000. Go ahead and check that off. And so those are our four, only three here because we didn't have any in, uh, any pp and &E. but that would be our, our four asset classifications. So now when we get to the bottom of that, we are going to do total assets. We've got our 134 from current assets plus another 40. That brings us to 174,000 plus another eight. Um, from our uh, intangibles, that brings us to a total of 182,000 in total assets. So there is the asset section of our classified balance sheet. Now we've got to move on to liabilities, but I am going to copy all of our notations over here so we can keep track of what have we used, what have we not used. Um, 
What do we have an asterisk next to? Because we still have to address it, so forth and so on. So let me just go ahead and bring those notes. Do, do, do. All righty. So we've got those notes over here. And let's move on to our liability section. So liabilities. Go ahead and underline that. Liabilities are only broken into two pieces, and that is your current liabilities and your long-term liabilities. So I'm going to start off with current liabilities. And in current liabilities, we identified accounts payable, and we also identified income taxes payable. Now, when you do your current liabilities, typically if you have any notes, those go first. If you have accounts payable, that goes second. If you have any unearns, that would go third. And then the rest would go in order of magnitude. In this case, we have an accounts payable, so that's gonna take priority. So accounts payable for 35,000. And then we only have one other one, and that is our income taxes payable. Income tax payable. And that was for 11,000. So our total current liabilities, subtotal that up, total CL comes out to 46,000. Put check marks next to those that we've used them up. Then we need our long-term liabilities. And in this case, we actually did not identify any long-term liabilities. We can skip that section, which means our total liabilities is equal to that same 46,000. All right, that finishes off liabilities. Now we've got to do our shareholders equity. So shareholders equity, let's put an underline there. All right, shareholders equity, we have some common stock. You always start off with your stock accounts. So common stock, remember there are no subcategories here. We're just gonna dump everything that goes into equity in this spot, so common stock. Uh, 54,000, use that up. And then the final piece of information that we haven't used yet, our retained earnings. And remember, we need ending retained earnings, not beginning retained earnings. And so we're gonna have to do a little math here. Retained earnings beginning was uh, 23,000 according to the given information. We need to add net income we need to subtract any dividends, and that will give us retained earnings ending. All right, let's start with net income. Remember those items that we scratched out, the revenue and expense items. Well, those are our income statement items. So that's what's gonna give us our net income. So I'm gonna pull out my calculator, and we've got 240,000 in revenue minus 170,000 in cost of goods sold minus another 11,000 in taxes gives us net income of $59,000. Now notice, there is nothing in the problem that suggests any dividends were paid. We have no dividend payable account. We have no notes about dividends. And so absent any additional information, we're gonna just assume that that must have been zero. And so now that we do the math on this, we're gonna come out with um, retained earnings of $82,000, that's what's going to populate our balance sheet, ending retained earnings, $82,000. That gives us total stockholders equity, if we add those together, of $136,000. And then of course, we're gonna to wanna to check our work by creating a total L plus SE line. And so I'm just gonna move this down just a little bit to squeeze it in. All right, total L plus SE. That's our 136,000 shareholders equity plus our 46,000 of total liabilities, giving us a total L plus SE of 182,000. We wanna compare that to our assets to make sure they match 182 L plus SE. 182 total assets, we are good to go. All right, hope you did okay on that one. Hope you found this a helpful walkthrough and I hope you join me for another video.